Algebra 2 Cram, New York State Algebra 2 Regents, Common Core, Basic Graphs of Trigonometric Functions, Domain of the Tangent of X. The odds of someone doing exactly what you tell them to do is pretty slim, but I guarantee that if you cram with me, you'll become an Algebra 2 Master, so inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com. To order this complete cram session, be sure to spread the word to your friends and classmates who also need to cram. Let's cram the concept of domain of tan x. All right, so the domain of the tan x or tangent of x. Here we say tan x, but in um, this orientation pre-example, I'm going to call the angle theta. Okay, it's a Greek letter because we don't want to double up on our x's. So this is just like a pre-recall, reminder, whatever you want to call it, before we get into the actual question of what the tangent of an angle is. So here we have our Cartesian coordinate plane, and you see that we have an angle whose vertex is at the origin, zero. The initial side is on the positive x-axis, and the terminal side is in quadrant one, between zero degrees and the quadrantal angle 90 degrees, okay? So uh, this angle or the ray, the terminal side ray made by the angle, you can orient it into its x-coordinate as shown here and its y-coordinate, making a right triangle. We're gonna indicate our right triangle, okay? All right, there we go. And so um, you would say that the tangent of this angle theta is going to be the y-coordinate. If this were not in a Cartesian coordinate plane and it was just like a normal triangle, it would be the side opposite the angle divided by the x-coordinate in the Cartesian coordinate system. And outside of the Cartesian coordinate system, it would just be the side at the bottom of the angle or adjacent to the angle within the triangle, okay? But because we are in a Cartesian coordinate system, the y-coordinate, not magnitude, can be positive or negative. Negative in the instances that you're in quadrant three and quadrant four, and as well as the x-coordinate, um, it can be positive in quadrants one, four, okay? And negative in quadrants two and and also what we want to be wary of is the fact that x can be equivalent to zero if you're 90 degrees or 270 degrees, okay? Because there's no x extent or extent in the right word or left word direction once you hit these points. So it's zero. And we know that things get tricky when we have zero in the denominator of a fraction because the fraction becomes undefined. So I just want you to keep this in mind. This is a quick concept of the tangent of theta. And now for the actual question, what is the domain of the function y equals the tangent of x? And um, definitely press pause now if you need to, to get your thoughts together and write out your answer and draw a graph of what you mean. And recall that the domain of a function is the set of all possible values of the independent variable, usually x, okay? But in our instance, it's going to be a little different since we're dealing with a trigonometric function tangent. So I'll give you a moment to think again. All right, so hopefully by now you are able to press pause and write out your solution, and if not, that's completely fine. Here goes a rendition of y equals the tangent of x, okay? And the answer is that the domain or the independent variables along the horizontal axis include all real numbers except odd multiples of pi over two for the same reasons that I told you before, because pi over two is the radian value of 90 degrees. So at 90 degrees, you have indefinition, a vertical asymptote, where the dependent outputs travel upward in the positive infinity direction and downward infinity direction. And again, remember I said 270 degrees. Here, 3 pi over 2 is the radian value for 270 degrees. Vertical asymptote, undefined, indefinition. I'm not even sure if that's the right way to call it, but you get what I mean. 
Okay, and all real numbers. This is a biggie. A lot of people get confused with numbers, real numbers, fake numbers. But um, let me just give you a really, really quick rundown of what that is. Okay, so a real number is a val um, a quantity along the number line or the x axis. Here things are a little different since we're dealing with radians, but you can always convert radians to um, numerals or degrees. And real numbers include rational numbers that can be written as fractions a over b. So let's write that out. Okay, Our, so real numbers include rational numbers that can be expressed as fraction. And remember that b can be implicitly 1 if it's not written. Okay, and real numbers also include irrational numbers that can't be written in the form a over b because and what I also want you to know is that um, real numbers that are rational, they can form decimals that terminate, for example, 2 over 1, okay, or 3 over 4. The decimal is going to be 0. 0.75 for 3 over 4. But what if you were to have a, the square root of 2 over 1? This is not a rational number. It's a real number, but it's not rational. Also, rational numbers include integers. When I say integers, I mean counting numbers that you can find on the number line, such as 0, let's say negative 2, or positive 4, okay? So that was just a quickie, a quick overview of real numbers. So the domain of the tangent of x, again, is um, going to be all real numbers except odd multiples of pi over 2. And in degrees, that's 90 degrees. So odd multiples of 90 degrees or odd multiples of pi over 2. Okay? All right. Thanks for tuning in.